All right, Lap and Lich, we are locked and loaded. Let's go. All right, so Brad, Kurtz, would you like to tell us what happened last session? Uh, well, it wasn't really too much. We were mostly just finishing up the fight uh, with Melora, which we did finish and did win. Um, then we did have to escape as the tower was collapsing uh, due to the Verit effect having exploded or just split in half excuse me and um while most people were able to get out through the outside either through getting thrown out uh falling down some stairs or being teleported <laughs> away uh kurtz had to hoof it down most of the tower himself on the back of the summon uh we faced a lot of grand vidir some would say an inhuman amount of Grand Vidir. Yeah, we rolled uh, really bad on those D100s. <laughs> yeah. And Barry went down to grab the bag of holding from Makinga, which should have all of the artifacts that we had stuffed in it to allow us to actually escape the tower. And everybody made it outside, mostly. Well, everybody did make it outside alive. But then Alora and Kaylor went back inside, and then Kaylor went down, and then everybody got outside. Kaylor was revived, and we defeated Alora and made it out alive. Surprisingly, no one died this time. We tree hopped to my house. Someone, someone died. Yep, yeah, he not... came back. <laughs> he came back. It's fine. <laughs> he's fine. It's probably yeah. not the first time he's done that. And then we did tree stride something to... like that <laughs> yeah transport Orleans via plane village oh. trees tree stride is the short range one all right well you guys arrive back in the fungi forest uh battered bruised but victorious uh you arrive it with a uh uh, a curious look on everyone's face, like, what, where, where did you come from? And uh, individuals from the Fungi Forest, uh, your uh, funglet friends and family as well, uh, greet you and also are confused. They begin to, to look at you in concern, treating your wounds, and <clears throat> what do you guys do from here? What's up, Yam? Um, so, uh, Haloth has fallen, which is like super cool. Uh, so I think we're all just gonna like um, chill here for a while and perhaps you know like come in and out, use this as a base for a little bit. Hot springs, hot springs. Anyone else? Hot springs. Yeah, hot springs. Yep. Amen to that. Let's go. In the fungi forest, I thought that's an Embla. Well, I'm sure the fungus know where the good hot springs are. That hot, Hell natty yeah. hot spring. All right. Uh, I'm going to flip that a case... destiny, destiny point and just say that we know a hot spring. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let me move you guys over to there. Uh, without much issue, you guys are um, brought over to a section of the, um, of the uh, area where you can find some nice hot springs and are able to relax for the first time in what seems like forever. All I'm saying is that I have sent you a map of Sporlina's village. Oh, yeah, I have it. Uh, let me see. Are there are there hot springs in that map? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. I sorry. think so. Or maybe not. I if... can't remember. I've made a couple of different ones. I think this is... There's a little river. I see no hot oh, springs. No. Oh, boo. But it's okay. God, why is the grid so dark? not dark on mine. It's just mine. Nope, I'm good. Well, <clears throat> neither here nor there. You guys are welcome back, and people are asking you what had happened. You begin telling them the details. Um, 
and maybe you're getting annoyed because you're just like, I just want to relax. Um, but yeah, you otherwise, what do you do in the hot springs? Uh, who's getting naked? Who's getting, uh, you know. Oh, Sporlita got naked as soon as she entered the village. <laughs> you really have to ask, Jesse. I hate hey. I thought Sporlina didn't wear clothes. If she does for like your guys' sake out in like public or whatever. But when you guys come into the village, everybody is naked. Like old, young, everybody has no clothes on. So you guys are actually the odd ones out. That's fair. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we don't have swimming trunks, so we are we're all getting naked in the hot spring. Yeah, we actually prefer if you don't yeah. wear clothes, it really messes with the pH. <laughs> I think Kaylor just by himself messes with the pH. No, actually, um Kaylor has like a little fan club here now. All the girls like him and his death smell. You guys hear thud, 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 Barry! and he jumps up and does a cannonball. <laughs> and now the hot springs are empty. Thanks a lot, Barry. <laughs> Barry. It's, for... it's okay, Barry. It's for Lena just controls water and all that. <laughs> <sighs> well, so what's everyone got planned for? Uh, now I'm gonna sit in here till I turn into a prune Orlina's mother comes by well that should be only about 10 minutes so uh what about after are you guys planning on staying um we might be back and forth we do have a uh, city to see to it being rebuilt and uh business up on the surface for some of us and well, might as might need to keep an eye on Holoth, make sure they don't turn back to their old yeah. way. Yeah. I want to go kick my. Sorry, you cut out. Was, I want to go that... kick my my dad's ass. Uh, like... yeah. I'm gonna go and kick my dad's ass. Uh, having paternal issues. Don't you answer that question, Senna. It's a trap. Oh, She's gonna psychology you. Sporlina, are you going to stay home and manage the uh, shop now? Um, uh, Sporlina just starts slowly sinking into the water until she's completely submerged. I mean, we still have some, uh, we have agreements we have to attend to. I'm sure that'll take a little while or, you know, a long time. Or forever. <laughs> Sporlina's dad comes back. Well, whatever you decide, you know you're always welcome here. Things have really turned up since you guys uh, came around last. We've been managing all of the fungal forest and have even found a little bit of uh, peace between the different tribes and different uh, races and species here. Species. We're using species now. Wow. Um... Your dad's from another time, Sporlina. You gotta give him time to <laughs> reacclimate. Um, I'm actually happy to hear that. If there's anything that I would really, um, really like for us is um, to get back to shepherding the vor, um, and re-upping their population and keeping their uh, population out of the grubby little hands of those gross bat things. The Hador? What are those things called? Ahul. The Ahul. 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 Because yucky. Funny you should mention that as your dad uh, does like a whistle and then you hear Yes! And you see about five of these wee little vores, no bigger than like uh, <laughs> you probably hold them in two hands like easily. Um, and there's these, they're just little piglets, little piglets, just, wee, oh my God, wee, oh and they're my just God. running around. And then you, you hear, broom, broom, a bigger vavor, uh, looks to be a mother, um, probably not that like big, but big enough to at least have children. Um, 
it's a little, it's a little bacon seed. Sporlina just starts petting them all. She's scritching them all. She's over the moon. Frick yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Finally, we're doing something with our power. That's good. Okay. And we finally uh, raised all the fields of um, tainted fungi. So should make good for a good crop next uh next season i'm loving that for us i mean my I, you guys are good here without me That's i guess good. my the only other thing that uh there wasn't really anything i wanted to necessarily do here besides obviously relax but i would like to go back to the surface just to like see how everyone's doing oh well, you're always welcome here as you know I'd be so mad if my dad was like, but you have a time limit, bitch. Like, you can't be gone that long. Well, you can't be gone that long because I'll miss you. And we have this arranged marriage for you. <laughs> yes, fucking right. <laughs> this whole time, Sporlin has been running away from an arranged marriage. <laughs> no. Sporlina, you remember Hazan. <laughs> no, I used to sure doubt. <laughs> oh. Absolutely not. Sporlina would never allow that shit to happen to her. <laughs> Bree would never allow Sporlina to have that happen to her. <laughs> okay. So so we do the relaxing. And then uh, possibly re return to Halath the next day to make sure things Please. get wrapped up there. And get our medals. I assume we get medals. And the child mentioned, mentioned a check. check. I'm sure that the medals come from come when we return to Stonehelm. Or, uh... I, you can have a medal. I want a stack. That was a good reference. I, you guys can keep your medals. I want a statue. I can see we, the bard is very uh, humble. Holy shit, you're a bard? <laughs> I almost... <laughs> Piss off. I'm not the singing type, okay? You know better than to get into it with her. She's just gonna get worse. Well, oh, I know, but it's fun when she gets spicy. Speaking of getting spicy, uh, uh, good night, all of you. Have fun on the rest of the hot springs. I'm gonna go let uh, my lady here attend to my wound. Gross. Keep it quiet. Funglets have excellent hearing. Oh, great. And you'll all be able to hear. <laughs> we literally have mushroom houses, so, like, we can talk through them. Uh, which means we can also see through them. Interesting. I don't, I don't, say, I don't say that part loud. <laughs> that is very funny, though. I, I've never minded an audience. All right, so you guys head off to go sleep it off. Um, everyone can take a long rest. You do not need to spend a ration. Sick. I eat part of the house. Boop. You eat <laughs> part of the house, did you say? Like like Wonka's. <laughs> yeah. I would not recommend exactly. it. Why would you do that? Come you know with how me, I, and you'll go, see in a world of hallucinogen. You are going to trip ball. <laughs> You know how, Go ahead like, and roll a constitution save. And then a wisdom say, save. You know how, like, gingerbread houses uh, that you make for, like, competitions, they use, like, not edible glue sometimes? And you, like, as a kid, you're like, I want to eat it. And then you eat it and it tastes like ass because it's... Um, it's PVC glue. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> not the right kind of glue. Uh, that could be what you're seeing here. <laughs> um <laughs> is not very bright. He sees mushroom. Did you roll? Okay, you did roll. It's easy. 45. 22? <laughs> yeah, you're probably fine. No. Hertz, Hertz, is in... Hertz is eating a lot of stuff he shouldn't have. This is, a, this is normal. Including a pirate queen. I was going to say, that's not a... Oh. I don't think we went over it. What? Uh, what did you all get for your level up? An extra spell slot? I... Yeah. Hey. Yeah, 
nothing fancy by any means. Yeah, same. Our, my, our next level up is an ability score. <clears throat> oh, God, or feet. But, yeah, this one was basically just... I got 8th level spells. Ditto. I got a 2nd, 4th level spell. Because I'm fancy. Okay, then this is a good time to mention something else you all get. Uh, change the homebrew rules. Potion drinking. Drinking a potion is a bonus action. Administering a potion is an action. Drinking a potion out of combat during non-stressful slash intense moments... You regain maximum healing for a uh, potion. Sweet. Lick the Sick. bottle. Got it. Ooh. Lick the bottle. Nice. Uh, <laughs> on top of this, every good thing has a bad thing. Um, when you drop to zero hit points, you gain one level of exhaustion. If you die and are resurrected through whatever means, you gain two levels of, ex of exhaustion. That's cool. That's actually a homebrew rule I've been thinking about putting in my game for a long time. Glad it's become normalized. Yeah, I think that's a. Could you just I mean, repeat that you you were a little choppy. Sure. When you drop to zero hit points, you gain one level of exhaustion. When you die and are resurrected through whatever means, oh. you gain two levels of exhaustion. So it's in other words, like if you if you hold and you hoard your healing. Um, which is fine. You can hoard your healing all you want and then wait for someone to go down to zero and then you just pop them back up and bring them back up. There's actually a, like a, a bad thing that happens when you drop to zero. It's It has nothing to do with death saves, has nothing to do with dying. It's just if you drop to zero hit points. Jesse just doesn't want us to kill, let our friends die, which is I, boring. I, hear... <laughs> I feel like that was targeted. I just didn't hear the zero hit points part. That was the one. Yeah. <laughs> That was just all like I. It was scratchy during. I couldn't tell what hit points you were talking. What, what hit points you said? No problem. Uh, and then I also am going to be uh, messing around with uh, resistances and vulnerabilities. Resistances will will not change. No matter what, they will not change. But vulnerability, like I think, fifty monsters out of the thousands of monsters that D and D has uh, have vulnerabilities, and they're kind of pointless. So I want to start adding. Uh, vulnerabilities like skeletons have vulnerability to bludgeoning damage, but I don't want it to be double damage. I want it to be like, you get an extra 1d10 or 2d10 or 4d10 per turn, you use a bludgeoning weapon, you know, like something like that. Uh, but I'll, I'm going to play around with it. I, that That's to be determined and to be continued. Is that going to work for this bitch? Because this, this bitch is vulnerable to fire. No, yeah, I haven't, I haven't made anything yet, so you're still double damage to fire, so sucks to suck. Boo! <laughs> Until I, I figure it out. At the DM. <laughs> uh, DM dodges and throws no. a nuclear bomb at you. <laughs> Infinite legendary resistance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Piss off. All right, well, after a, a nice, relaxing night for you guys, um, what would you like to do in the morning? Might be relaxing for some. <laughs> um, head back to Holoth. Uh, so, a couple things. One, we did say that we were going to resurrect uh, Stone Crystal Bitch. Um, we never actually said when we were going to do that, so that doesn't need to be done immediately. Um... But yeah, uh, return. Uh, she doesn't need to wake up. I think that there's uh, there's probably some point in us being part of like the formal surrender negotiations to um, a lot. What was that? We did most of the work because we yeah. did most of the work. Precisely. I mean, we don't have a huge stake in what happens in the underground, but we've been, you know, very uh, active in. Uh, you know, not only the politics of Haloth, but Embla and Stoneholm uh, since we got down here. So. Uh, I have a high stakes of what happens well, that's down true. here. True. Yeah. I would assume Kalor is not here, but I would assume with his background and, and society that he's in, he has some stakes in being part of that as well. Wait, I might actually have stakes with Bethan's hold now. That's true. That's true. And I might also have draw steaks. But that's just for dinner. Uh, 
I was waiting for that pun. <laughs> da -da. Uh, yeah, and then obviously gather some dead to uh, upgrade Barry. Uh, yep, yeah. and then, I mean, I've got things to do over the course of the month, but uh, anybody else have, like, next day kind of things to do? Um, what about your mom? That's part of, like, my monthly stuff. Got it. All right. If nobody has anything else more immediate, we are going to travel off to Haloth. That right. Uh, let me move you guys. Where's Haloth? It's down here. As you guys make your way back to Haloth, uh, I assume you travel... Just... Excuse me. Whoa, that was a good burp. Oof. Uh, I assume you travel just um, regularly, or do you travel via plants or something? Um, I did look at the book you sent us, and... I I would like to use a spell from that book. Wait, which which book? The level of Avengers Guide. Ah, okay. I did not approve any spells, but I will give you a, a chance. Uh, hold on. It's called uh, Wormway. Uh, and basically how it works is I... Let me... Sorry, let me get to it real fast so I can... Spells, spells. Um, it's basically that I summon a uh, purple worm that carries us to wherever we want to go. Does not do combat. No, it's just a way. It's called Wormway, like a highway. It's basically a, it's a way to transform us or like I... transfer us. Okay, okay, guys, guys, guys. Here we go. Do we? <laughs> so, you guys see Sporolina summon and do this massive ritual where you feel a rumble beneath your feet and this purple worm uh, immediately emerges from a nearby fungal forest field. And as it comes by, uh, uh, so you guys... It, it also, ahead. it eats you. Uh, so, <laughs> how it works is that it comes up out of the ground and it opens its maw. Then the targets climb inside where they are enclosed in an impervious hemispherical dome of force. And then once you're all loaded up, uh, then it travels back down underground. So we're just like inside a purple worm now. Okay, I I had a different idea, but we can go with we can go with whatever okay. idea you want. But I was thinking. Um, it turns around, begins burrowing into the ground, and on its tail are little silks that, um, that you know, worms pr provide silk. So you, right. each of you grab a thing of silk and uh, a mushroom cap, one of those hard mushroom caps, and you well, put like it on the ground. I love and that, yeah. We're street you skiing. Think, yeah, you're just like big... Ba -na 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 Deal. Yeah, I'm fine with that, too. Whichever one you guys want, I don't care. I just thought that it was. A I was fun thinking we all pull visual. out our uh, pickaxes and uh, ride it like the fucking worms and do. That's, that's what I thought. I don't want to oh. hurt it. Well, it it's wouldn't. Being so it doesn't nice. pierce the carpet. <laughs> you hook onto its scale. But neither here nor there. You are dropped off right at the entrance of Haloth. As Thanks, guys... Marie. See you later. <laughs> As you guys uh, <laughs> enter Haloth, you His can name? see a much different type of Haloth, where there was that imposing, imposing uh, stalactite, stalagmite, um, is no longer present. And as you recall, it shrunk down to size uh, of no bigger than, you know, a little bit taller than a regular drow. And you can see near the main entrance that is toward the long road entrance, uh, you can see that there is, in fact, a contingent of what looks to be dwarves, alchuns, a devil-looking creature, and uh, I think that's it for now. I don't think the Vadir would be here yet. And, and a few drow, some of which you recognize 
as um, the uh, what's her name? Damn it, Gal Gal Gullion and her confidant, uh, male confidant. And it looks like they're having a open meeting and discussion with multiple, multiple individuals. I think you had uh, that backwards again. It was Gal Golian was the dude. I think Gal is the female. Yes. Yeah. Gal was the female. Oh, we had that backwards originally. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And it looks like they're having a discussion. And there are multiple dwarven soldiers nearby. Uh, you see Meredith's firebrand uh, looks to be bandaged up and looks much better than before. Um, many of the um, many of the dwarves look to be in, in battle-scorned armor. The Alhul, the Alhul also look to be pretty battered and bruised up. Um, and the Drow, uh, all their soldiers are pretty much... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, no, no spears, no swords. All have been disarmed, and it looks like uh, Galgalian and a few other uh, house representatives um, are currently in discussions. Uh, what do you all do? Wow, friends, looking like super good. Well, if it isn't the heroes of us, uh, and you can see uh, Mia of Embla shows up. So, uh, oh. we've been looking for you. Did, did you... Were you on the tower? Like, what, what happened? Oh, oh, sorry. We were, like, just, like, visiting my parents, taking a break after yesterday. You know, that kind of stuff. We did our part. <laughs> so we bounced for a little bit. Don't mind. Yeah, we, we, to be fair, we yeah, were on we Death's Door. Yeah. I'm glad that you made it out alive. Now, as I was saying... And he looks now to the drow. What kind of uh, reparations do you have for us? As Gal, the female, and a few others uh, look to you as well as the other um, leaders and just says, Haloth is going to rebuild itself and provide itself a new type of culture. One that will not enslave others so easily. Slavery is a part of our culture, but I think we can begin to move on from it and figure out of other ways. Yep. And what about uh, Embla? All of our soldiers will move out of Embla post haste, or at least what's left of them, as she looks over to the Alhoon, Alhuls, um, Alhuns. Wonderful. And, uh, how can we know that you'll never do this again? I... How about we have ambassadors? Individuals that stay uh, inside of Haloth, of every species of the underworld. And we will continue our culture as we would like, but with a little bit of oversight. Is that amendable to you all? As they all look at each other and kind of nod and give the okay. Very well. And of course, we will pay reparations in silk for at least uh, 50 years. Make it 75. You hear the Alhoons, and you can see uh, the dwarves are looking like uh, at you guys waiting for your input as well. Uh... Yes, that sounds perfect. Because Perlita is like, I don't fucking know how to do this. Um, One million years. I think that 75 is excessive, seeing as it was only my mother who uh, took this upon herself in order to... Yeah, but you didn't, like, try and stop it either. One person doesn't do all the damage that no was caused. Years. People make choices, and those choices led you to this place right now. Although, I will point out that putting someone in perpetual debt uh, might have an adverse effect on repairing relations between the species. Pretty diverse size. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> Very well. How about 65, as the Alhoon grumbles? 
that should be amendable. And the rest of the leaders look at each other and nod and agree. We will send ambassadors and uh, also some workers to help you rebuild. Anyone who uh, is willing will be allowed to help rebuild Haloth and uh, have a say in your culture. Now, who is going to be your cur current leader? Well, that's for the houses to decide. Me? I think I'm going to take a break from politics for a while. And you see the other houses um, look at each other and um, already have a knowing look of like who's going to be next. I in vote Makinga. Do you see Makinga before us? No, I guess she ran away, huh? I think Makinga's got her own machinations to go on. I will say not to disrespect your culture, but it does seem that the political structure of having your houses uh, run things, while it may have worked for many thousands of years, also causes a lot of death and destruction between your own people. Maybe, maybe not today, but it might be something you might look at also moving past. Well, the dwarves have their clans. And we have our houses. But I see your point. Our houses are bound by blood, but your clans generally are not. Maybe if I... we open our doors a little bit. I do have one other stipulation as well. Let's hear it. Those uh, drow that you have run out of the city you must be allowed back in. We, or my mother. At this point, it's kind of tomato, tomato. So. Very well. House Frazen will be let back in. If they can be reached. I don't even know where they are. They're in a mushroom cave. Um, and I guess we will send for them post haste. I have to look something up. Uh, I think it was you, you Jesse, you know, Laura would know this information, so just if you can help me out here. I think it's uh House Invidious, the house in shadow, uh where the yeah, the two remaining children, Agony and Nadal. Um, okay. Uh, that they, if they still live, uh, be issued a full pardon and be allowed back into the rank. What was their violation again? Remind me. Their violation was being part of House Invidious when uh, House um, Darren Ray decided to uh, destroy them. Do you mean House Frasian? Uh, I was just looking at the notes here. To, to, with the exceptional illusion magic, the Arcanist fooled House Zarin Ray into thinking the Invidious ah. twins were sacrificed. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Okay. This was a little bit before. Okay, cool. Uh, <clears throat> again, if they can be found, they will be pardoned. Anything else? I was going to say, can I do like an insight check on that? Absolutely. <laughs> Although the worst. We might kill sense. him. Oh my god, good lord. You got this. I believe in you. Twenty-eight. I believe. Hey. I believe. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Uh all right, so you get the you get the idea that she feels kind of embarrassed. She feels ashamed. She feels uh, like, yeah, again, embarrassed. She she doesn't want to be here. She wants this to wrap up as soon as possible. Um, and uh, she's agreeing because she just wants it to be over with. Not saying, <clears throat> God damn it. 
coughing like crazy. Not saying she's going to kill anyone or anything, but she is pretty much willing to give anything for this to be over with and move on. Got it. Which, fair. Also, I think you've um, already acknowledged that the xenophobic uh, ways of thinking have caused damage to not only you, but other places in the Underdark. I propose uh, once a year... <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go... I'm going to go out of character and say this. I'm going to literally sit down and propose basically an Underdark Olympics where oh uh, once a year each one of the cities hosts uh, people from every one of the other cities to compete <laughs> In a non, like, uh, volatile format, uh, and uh, you know, gives out awards and accolades because of it. To introduce more uh, interspecies mingling. She like between and her teeth, kind of smiles. Uh, between her teeth, she smiles and goes. Then why don't we have a parade as well? That's an excellent that idea. My point. <laughs> I'm gonna, not as, she, as she says that, I'm going to point over my shoulder at Barry. Says, no, we, there's we, not. We brought her on float. <laughs> Wonderful. We will make it so. In fact, how about we host the first one? I think that's a marvelous idea. Uh, let's make it an occasion to mark the end of the war one year from today. Very well. And again, you see all the rest of them agree, just trying to get this meeting over with. You have a little smile with. on your face the whole time. Mia just goes, <laughs> all right, I think this is amendable. Thank you all for your time. And uh, let the uh, repair go quickly and swiftly. Bye. Super fun meeting all you. Sorry about, you know, your home. <clears throat> Well, <laughs> all right. What would you all like to do from this point? Question. Answer. Do we know how? And this might anybody can answer this if you have notes or anything. Do we know anybody from like a highborn dwarven family that is single and ready to mingle? Because we could totally set him up with the. Uh, the young daughter from House of Vain. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait Let's a minute. build some bridges, everybody. Else? I don't... Uh, so let me... I mean, let me... we could uh, see if anyone else from the... So, uh, let me think. So, House Greybeard, uh, the last of their bloodline, died. There are still others in House Greybeard that are alive, obviously, but they're not from the Greybeard, like, blood. Um, uh, House Casisto is like a hodgepodge, hodgepodge of different individuals who just want to do monster hunting. Uh, <clears throat> Clan Blackroot might have, uh, they'd probably be the most close to uh, having a, a son, a young son or uh, or daughter that might be interested in said gotcha. thing. Uh, all right, I'm I'm adding this to my month long quest, Jesse. We're gonna set up a series of meat cutes between <laughs> the daughter. Oh my god! Yeah, we're gonna set up a series of meat cutes between the daughter of House Vane and the Black Root, whatever the Black Root like heir is. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> Oh God! Jesse hates. Oh this. Jesus! Did Dan just get here? I just got here. <laughs> I just got back from the vet. <laughs> Where did you come from? <laughs> it's been here the whole time. I came in just in time for the graybeard conversation. <laughs> nice. Uh, Kalor, how are you? How is life? Oh, uh, things are going all right. I'm uh surviving. Just took Rosie to get a whole bunch of shots so I can Aww. put her, leave her, for the holiday. And uh, yeah, that's about it. 
Okay. Um, if anybody's watching that Rosie is his girlfriend and... Uh... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't think that's right. Um, all right. So let's see. Uh, in essence, you guys rested in the fungal forest and then you came back. You were talking about reparations and you had a big meeting. Um, and now we're going to get to what are you going to do for about a month or so? Um, yeah. So who, how about we roll initiative? Let's yeah, see who on. goes first. Is Kaylor back from the dead? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we rest him. Yeah. All right. Are you just rollies or doing initiative? Oh, uh, I, I have said initiative. initiative and I don't want to go first. Yeah, I said, I said oh. initiative, but whatever. Mm. Oh god damn it. I'm so nice. I, oh, I guess this no. is appropriate because uh, we were just with uh, your parents and stuff. So, Sporlina, tell us in great detail what do you do for about a month of time? Um, I fuck every single boy in my village, Avi. Uh, <laughs> no, okay, so Sporlina spends a lot of time setting up trade routes between her village and the other fungal villagers or in the other fungal villages uh, just to help people communicate better so there's not so much this like uh, us and them us and them mentality which apparently my group ha- my family had already been working on so proud of them for that um <laughs> And after that, I think Sperlina would just help anybody else with anything they need. Uh, she also is totally into, like, setting up uh, speed dating for everybody so we can all just, like, start meeting people. Uh, I had an idea to, to connect with Sporlina. Um, as they were talking about, like, trading silk and stuff, uh, I thought it would be an interesting thing to have the fungal villagers work with drow engineers and um uh dwarven stonemasons to see if there's some kind of way to make an amalgamation of stone uh fungal uh, mycelium and s- the strength of the drow silk to create like extremely um extremely durable like city walls and stuff like that things that you could bring these people all together to create new technology mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So let's do first a persuasion check to see how effective you are in uniting everyone together. Okay. Do you have enhance ability as a as a spell? I think so. Yeah. Can I assist with guidance on this? I don't know. Uh, are you are are you gonna be with Sporolina during your month? Uh, I'll be around. I don't know. If... I We're like a party, movie. Jesse. Let us help each other. Fine, fine, fine. Guidance and party <laughs> inspiration. Fifteen, not bad. So that's a D four and a D ten. Mm-hmm. Yep. 24. All right. So, uh the fungi in the uh the cannibal fungi, not the cannibal, the meat-eating fungi, uh they were probably the most difficult ones um to unite as well as the vegepygmies. The vegepygmies are all about just like chaos. Um but you kind of say, "All right, this is your corner, this is our corner. We're all going to be here, all happy family, and we're all going to do it." Uh, all live together in harmony together and you actually found that uh, you're not so different all of you um, in terms of you you just want to what do you call it carve out your life in this little section of the world and uh, they want the same and you started talking about like protecting the fungi forest from poachers or from individuals who just want to uh, take from the fungal forest and so you uh, set up kind of a, a system to prevent that uh, from occurring, and uh, remind me what else you were doing. Uh, trade between 
artisans of different species to try and see if we can make a strong, uh, I guess, fabrics? Building materials. Building like... materials. Yeah, between like fungus and spider silks and whatever the heck those Dubergar are doing. Okay. Uh, let's. How about we do a intelligence check? Just a base old intelligence check. Uh, how about wisdom? How about no? <laughs> Gosh, damn it! <laughs> oh my <laughs> God! Clutch, man. And with the first exports God, of damn. from Halaf coming about the end of the month. Um, shockingly, you were able to uh, construct something to to help with uh, all of the areas around the fungi forest to help make what was it? Your walls tougher? Yeah, just make building stuff like all building materials stronger. Uh, that way, when as we're rebuilding, we're able to like make our towns less crumbable. Crumbable. Correct. All right. Uh, and and it, indeed you do. Indeed you do. Uh, it is very effective. And uh, without issue, you are able to make everything that much more uh, robust. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's what that's what Sperlina does. All right. And I need to look at initiative. Uh, Cinemoira. What are you going to be doing during this time? Alora with some of her stuff while in the background also not realizing that we were going to start doing an underground Olympics uh, was going to start planning out <laughs> all the details um, including what they need to do for parades the bare minimum of what they need to do for opening and closing ceremonies all the events, who's going to do the metal designs, everything. And then she's also secretly going to um, get some gemstones set into jewelry. Um, I'll be more. Uh, the Hire I a hitman one... to kill my dad. <laughs> it, oh no, oh no, no. We don't hire no hitman. No, no. We don't go the lazy man option. This I, is I, personal I, now, bitch. <laughs> fucking personal. You try to sell me off like some sow. No, no, we don't do that. So I'm actually, if um, if Kurtz and Kaylor are going to be away, I'm going to use message to talk to them about like, hey, can you come and help me avenge uh, me against our father? Because he's an asshat and you both know it. I never and thought you'd ask. So <laughs> Greatest day of my life. All right. And I feel like we would just start planning that once everything underground is taken care of. So where are me and Kurtz then? Uh, I don't know. For, it's for a even... portion of the month, you are traveling, probably with the help of Sporolina to be like travel via plants. Um, and uh, you probably can teleport there like in a day and then teleport back in a day. So describe to us what you do to take care of your father. Oh, I you was sell him actually, him like off to be a sex slave. <laughs> oh, the old Uno reverse card. <laughs> I'd give him to the owl. I, I, I was gonna, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I was actually expecting to like fight fight him. Well, he he's still okay. pretty powerful, right? Like both in in personal <laughs> and politicy stuff. Yeah, that's, so that's kind of where thing. I was like, I wasn't. A... So okay, so Go you ahead. you want it to be a little little side campaign if you want. I I think that would be be a more realistic standpoint because I was kind of expecting to have to like take time to do that because i was i with how with how much he put up a fight against all of us i could not imagine we could us three could just take him down right now be great like, to have some you are, closure you are a lot more powerful <laughs> all, all right, right all right i know 
All right, in that case, we will uh, do a side campaign with that. So I will write that down in my notes so I can organize that. But Sorry. in the Murder meantime, montage. you guys are so uh, Senna, you, you ju you're just planning at this point. You're just planning on uh, yes. going up to the upper I'm world and taking out your father and whatever resources. Are you going to are you going to kill him or just beat him up? Um, no, K Kaylor, um, he's going to try to persuade his sibling because like, no. No, that would be too fair. We need to take everything from him. Everything. Which, from what he to said, he was was isn't much because he spent a lot of money. Wait, does that mean... Wait. I was gonna say, are you gonna be are you gonna become the new Lord Lord Torbane, or what's gonna happen then? Um, wait. So wait, what do you mean? Wait, he spent a lot already. You mean like he I bet on the wrong side of the. I thought that's what he, one of the things he said was that they, they that was why he was going to be like marrying Stina off is because he had, like the majority of the family wealth had already been spent and gone. He didn't have an army to bring to bring down. That's why he like lied and said he did bring an army. He still has influence. I, I mean, I could be fucking getting this completely wrong, Jesse. You'd have to remind me, but you have it perfectly right. Yeah. So he still has influence. He just doesn't have a whole lot of money. So what you really need to attack is his character and his influence. Okay. So, so I, if well, you I basically want to try to want... start building a like kind of by conspiracy a network to basically a smear campaign <laughs> to basically slowly smear him and yeah. make it so that all of his like rich friends that he can schmooze off of and hang out with all all abandon him is the is the long-term master plan yes all right yes. uh just i just still to, want to kick his ass just to oh. clear it up uh so if you recall you guys spied on him i think you scried on him actually and he was writing a letter and it said something along the lines of um i will figure out a way to bring my daughter and uh hopefully um you will give me a like a dowry and and whatnot um, and that was in essence, like him saying like, I need the funds. And that is why I'm guarantee you gu guaranteeing my daughter's hand, uh, when he sent that message. So it sounded like, yes, he had very little money, but anyway, Cinna, what else do you continue to do? Uh, besides plan really quick. You know what you should do? Kalor fuck his wife. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's a little edible. Wait, that's, but no, wait. Mom. Is is this or is this? Is, but wait, is there a stepmom? Mom. Is there a stepmom? Yeah, you're right. Your mom's dead, isn't she? I don't think there is. There might be. I don't know. No, but... I don't think she is. Hey, there's I'll no look at... there's no Oedipus Rex in this world, so we gotta make. <laughs> oh God. Do we have to? No. It's whatever you want, Sina. Oh God, I, can we not? Uh, All right, so Sina, then, what else I do guess, you do? Yes. Um, I patiently wait for this jewelry to be made, and then I uh, awkwardly propose to Alora. <gasps> Tell us how you do this. <laughs> uh, it, it is the worst timing because, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually pull a little bit from real life my co-worker tried to propose to his fiance like three times and oh, each time it got fucked up somehow like she didn't say no if it just got fucked up so like the ring shatters the first time so it gets Ooh. delayed and then covid happens the second time and so by the third time it's like god damn it i'm gonna propose i don't care anymore and it's just like, kind of feels you know, like that's an omen. <laughs> <laughs> for your coworker, not for you. <laughs> but yeah, the coworker, it, he's no, it's it's fine. But just kind of that, like, I I I keep failing to find a good moment, and then eventually I just kind of stop her in like, like the middle of between towns or whatever. If we're traveling via like, not through plants or giant worms, and just like. Laura, like shit, we've been through a lot. I met your mom's head, but I feel like we need to fix that problem. Um, you met my dad; he's an ass hat, and I I can't speak high or low for my brothers because they do a lot. But I 
I feel like it's time to make this official. And I open the little box and I like drop to one knee almost too fast. And I almost end up sitting down instead. And I can't even get the words out of my mouth. And I'm just <sighs> sitting there awkwardly waiting for an answer. <laughs> my goofy little love. Of I would tentatively say yes. The problem is, it, where I come from in my culture, one must, one must argue to one's father why their partner is good enough for them. Oh, that's great. And I have quite the well, argument for that. But first, I was gonna say, well, come with. First, I must find him. You'll help me along that endeavor. We will uh, shatter whatever temple we decide to do this thing in. Okay. <laughs> but but do you do you still want this? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just the, like, okay, but what do I do with this? We'll call it a promise ring for now. Okay. Yay! I should have thought about that. I just, I just figured we've, we've, we've fought and died almost enough times where it's like, no, we should probably, you know, make it official. All right. But yes. Argue to my father. This no, is, this is going to be the argue to my father. Going to destroy. Him. Oh, I have to argue to your dad. No, I have to argue to my dad. Oh, oh. I was confused. Uh oh, like that. Uh, and just to be clear, in the culture that she's from, it's the, no matter what your gender is. That's the that's like the rule. That's like the the code. Like you, do you guys go to like a a courthouse and argue? No, we just sit down at the Sizzler. And... No. Okay. no, it's actually it's a formal thing. She says father because she knows where her mother is, but it's really oh. both the parents. You argue to your parents why why you should be allowed to wed. So is this going to be a reverse rolled shotgun wedding? I don't know what that means. So I, instead I, of the I, I dad showing up with the shotgun and forcing you to get married, you're showing up yeah, with the shotgun much. and forcing your dad to let you get married. <laughs> pretty much. And I mean, wow. <laughs> on top of the cultural issues, like, she's t technically kind of royalty, so it's like kind of a big deal for her. Which I suppose okay. she would have revealed that to you. <laughs> At, that, at, some point. at some point during that whole proposal and, and you know, subsequent fuck fest. Gross. Okay. You know what? Sex is, I'm, is I'm beautiful. Like... It's not gross. Is that the uh, way we I... do it, baby? Okay. Right. <laughs> Sinus Sina, is kind of ahead. sitting there, like, trying to, like, put like all the dots in the right spot and making t like everything makes sense just kind of a okay so do we need to go find your dad then that is on the list of things to do now isn't it okay Dinna, well. anything else uh, no, that's it. I was I was not expecting the Olympics thing, but that would totally take up a good majority of her time. That's gonna be next year, so we got. So you're just planning the Olympics, planning no, I, your dad's I know. downfall. Just kind of like, yeah, just kind of like I'm scheming about the Olympics. I'm scheming about the downfall. I was scheming about how to do a much better proposal than that. Uh, yeah, lots of scheming. All right. Well, I'm adding to my notes. Uh bring down uh Cinna's father and 
spoiling that, are we going on adventure? Any adventures in the next uh, few sessions for you? I guess there's not she's really much adventures. She's thinking quizzically. No, no, she just. Okay, okay, then that's fine. Uh, Senna, we know what adventure you're going on in the next few adventures or yeah sessions. And uh, all right, yeah. let's move on to. Looks like bear, <laughs> bear he rolled. Uh, uh, Kurtz. All right, so I'm just getting that right. Uh, so Kurtz is going to help out with rebuilding Embla and Halaf, uh, just because you know there's probably a need for a cleric. What with uh, building accidents and whatnot, <laughs> and uh, you know helping with the uh, negotiate ongoing negotiations and I assume the prisoner of war transfers that will be happening um, and definitely making sure all the agreements that we made get followed such as you know some of the prisoners go to the Ahul and did we make a deal with the meat eating veggie guys oh we're keeping the deal with the Ahul uh, kind of have to. Unless we want to exterminate them. Be like nice yeah, a side quest. Wait, like, A, uh, you know, they still have slavery here in the lot, so it's like, I know they're saying they're trying to wind that down, but they still are doing that. I mean, yeah. we did kind of set up a thing where we know that the Ahul also pay their blood bags at, at sometimes, too. So, if yeah, we set can... Yeah, like, uh, contract stations like if you want to go here's the contract here's the route uh, right make sure if you're down you and out you don't have a bags. trade you don't have anywhere to go if you're living on the streets it's a much better thing to go and be a blood bag for a few years earn some coin come back and start a life. yeah so no matter how good the society yeah no matter how good the society there will always be people in need Oh wait, oh, okay, no, I'm mixing them up. I'm confusing th them with the uh, crystalline entity one. That's the deer. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah, no, fuck that. Or the Kuliatar, I should say. Alright. Yeah, so Continue. unionize, unionize this, the blood bags, um, I guess. <laughs> okay, I like it. And, uh, you know, just generally, you know, trying to make sure everything gets... Equi equitably, yeah, okay. um, fairly split up or managed, and also we'll spend some time with the wife in Bethan's hold. Hey, trade. What the fuck's going on there? So as you get over to Bethan's hold, um, it is kind of been doing the same thing it's been doing. Since when you left, only this time uh, there is a, uh, a new influence. As you can see, her influence has kind of taken over. Um, you can tell that individuals are more um, are more about the smuggling industry than about the killing, eating, and uh, uh, like smuggling is is bad, but it's not like killing bad and she's been causing that direction in Bethan's hold to be more and more prevalent because more money can be made with smuggling and trading and of that nature so think of it more as uh, an embla that ha is pretty much lawless but it's not as terrible as it was once before uh, she is getting some pushback from the uh, individuals of the council um, Adrix Galthron, as well as uh, the drow female whose name eludes me, El Elira, Elira, Elira. Um, she's getting a little bit of me, six hundred platinum. Yeah, yeah. They they're not necessarily happy, but uh, business is good, so they really can't complain right now. But you can definitely tell that there's some tension going on, and if you want to explore that, we can do a side adventure. Um, or if you just want to let it go, we can let it go. Also, I say no. Did 
didn't you also have another side adventure that we never got around to way back when? Yes, that's the uh, prince's treasure. Oh, that old thing. Huh. I swore I'd never go back. Yeah, well, we kind of finished our thing, so you know, we'll uh, we'll we'll take care of it, I guess. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, can't be any worse than what we just did. Yeah, good luck. Uh, okay. The fact that you're not saying anything about it kind Thanks. of worries me a little bit. <laughs> but th thanks. Uh, keep up the good work. And if you need any help with unruly people, you know where to find me. Of course, here. Um, also, I'm pregnant. Ooh. Cool. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but cool. I was thinking... Do you want kids? Sure. Great. And she jumps on you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh God. And we'll we'll cover that later. Uh, all right. Anything else? Um. No. All right, so it looks like the adventure for Kurtz is going to be that island of the Prince's Ransom. Uh, Elora. So, uh, I can kind of split up my days into three parts because uh, I don't have to sleep. So when Cinna, Cinna is soundly sleeping post-coitus, um, uh, I can slip off and my mother and I will be doing our research yes, into... Of course. Uh, our research well what what we'll do is uh while during the day first like eight hours of the day i'm gonna just be like super supportive girlfriend to Cinna, helping her get through all her planning stages second eight hours you know dinner and stuff like that but also um doing research and trying to uh, track down any detail of where we where we should start to uh, find where my father's head was taken and then uh the Eight hours that uh, that uh, I have my what my mom also has obviously uh, when everybody else is sleeping um, we will together be researching uh, I'd like to research more into the moon shard before we hand, hand it back to the temples in Rivalka uh, to see if we can figure out why everybody wants it and what power was being used by um, by Mistress Golian. Uh, you know what? What would made this thing so special? All right. Let me look that up real fast, so that I can just copy and paste. Uh, continue while I look this up. Uh, I, those those are the three main things that I'll be focusing on for the month. Um, and then of course any, uh, you know, weekends we'll be setting up the, uh, the meet cutes uh, for the. Uh, we're just gonna, you know what? We're just the realm royals. We're just gonna do speed dating. Yeah, you know, sporely not a great idea. We're gonna do speed dating. The get, realm royals. <laughs> just getting all the you know the the clans and the houses all mixing and mingling. It's gonna piss some dudes in Stoneholm off. I'm a hundred percent sure of that. But you know, like Embla was like a huge smorgasbord. It was like it, there were people of a bunch of different species there. Uh, the little doodleigs are awesome, and I think that especially with like the undead being sort of like a bruiser slash like police presence in uh, Haloth, like some fun little like celebration undead that come in and just like throw parties and just like hang out with people, I think would be cool. So just like it's all about mixing the peoples, man. Bringing in the hom hom homogeneity is that the right word? Homogeneity. <laughs> oh God. All right, I am taking a snapshot of this. I'm going to make it into a uh, handout for you in a minute. Breaking up the homogeneity, not bringing in it. All right, so it sounds like you want to go on an adventure to find your father's head. Right. And the last known location was or what you've learned from that is what are uh, are you asking me yes you um
yeah, that uh, last known location it wasn't actually a location. The last time it, his head was seen was by the actual attackers who attacked the uh, attacked our kingdom, um, mm -hmm. and was given to the sort of generals of that attack who were strange uh gray skinned long fingered beings with tentacles coming out of their mouths and they as quickly as they came they disappeared back into the mind flayers got it all right you can't right. call them mind flayers jesse that's you you can say mind flaya <laughs> All right, uh, so that is the Moon Shard, in case you haven't seen it before. Um, don't remember if I showed you this yet, but um, after investigating the Moon Shard, you realize that this is more than just this particular uh, description. Um, it is, in fact, one of the items that can, attune once attuned to you, can morph and shift and either aid or harm and curse you depending on its uh, disposition at the time. Um, so yeah, it can it will add or take away certain attributes or spells or uh, or things like that. Interesting. So that would mean that Melora was favored by the moon show. Maybe. Um, okay, interesting. Interesting. Does, does that mean Tolgarath Tower was a private, a giant private sanctum? Uh, I guess maybe. Uh, Tolgarath Tower was um, created before the Moon Shard got to it. Oh, so okay, okay. I, I'm going to assume no. All right. Anything else? Uh, okay. So, all right. So, there's no harm in giving it back to the temple at Rybolka if we. They yeah yeah they don't seem to be they they've had it for a long time and they don't seem to be abusing it. They seem to be protecting it. All right. Anything else? No no no. Uh, those just finding dad. Doing the moon shard, setting up meat cutes, and helping Senna uh, not lose her mind in all the plans. <laughs> all right. Organize everything. And then, of course, I I will say if the group is is okay with this, uh, I would ha ha make a pilgrimage back to the uh, to Rybalka and return the moon. Shard. As long as I can hand it over to. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. I don't want to try. All right. Go for it. I want to hold it but again. <laughs> and Kalor, or I'm, well, I, I will get to bury it last, I guess. Uh, Kalor. So I've thought about it some more, and I think I know what Kalor is going to be doing. Uh, wh what is the name of this city again? The the one we're looking at on the map. Haloth. Haloth. All right. So if I'm understanding, we we still left. The, uh, some other drow families in charge and we didn't totally wipe things clean from what I understand. Right? Indeed. Okay. Kalor, this doesn't settle well with him. He he starts reaching out to like, you know, go try to get some contacts to, to see where this plan with finding his father can go, but a lot more of his energy is going to go into really embracing that cloak of bat that he has. And he starts going around town. He he starts trying to like find ways to like sneak out or fart out or smuggle out some of the slaves. And he starts exacting um 
what he calls him what he calls vengeance upon certain well to do drow, but not but trying to stay away from the too high up ones that would draw too much attention. Okay. Basically uh, it, it he, he he's going half just full vengeance Batman Vigilante. And vigilante <laughs> and he's and he's doing a half like and he's trying to start a half underground railroad. He's probably at this point mostly just, you know, stealing some one offs, stealing some money from some, from some of the drow, maybe killing or threatening one or two while trying to say I am vengeance in, a, in, in his deepest voice while hidden behind magical darkness. He's, he's right. Batman, but he's like wearing the Adam West Batman costume because he's so squishy. <laughs> Uh, I love Adam West. All right, uh, <laughs> go ahead and make either a persuasion or intimidation roll, uh, okay. or performance. I'll even allow you to do a performance to see how good your Batman roll is. Um, with this casting of darkness, with all, and this bat cloak, and this, will, can you give him advantage, please? Sure. Like, yeah, it, of course. It's it's literally the Batman cloak. <laughs> yes. All right. I will give you advantage. Roll one more time, just in case. 18. Good. All right. And then we get, we're going to need a uh, two stealths for advantage. Or yeah, advantage and stealth. And then just a regular sleight of hand roll. Natural 20. Oh, I see a 14. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep that 14 instead. Sorry. All right. And Light, the slide of what's the slide of hand for? It's the general, uh, like you uh, stealing things and uh, maybe opening like safes and locks and other things oh, like yeah. that. Well, we'll see how that goes. My my main thing is to uh, not try to break the locks. But my main strategy is going to be turning into a gas and escaping. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah, slide of hand. <laughs> you, you're you are doing your best. You are stealthing. You're not being found, but like <laughs> that fucking safe that you've been trying <laughs> to get open for so long uh it's just a regular roll so i'm gonna keep that eight yeah okay um you're you're never caught and your intimidation works pretty well um but that fucking safe that you've been trying to get into <laughs> just you can't get into it for whatever reason and doors doors are your enemy i mean normally you can just like you know gaseous form and go under it but like sometimes you just want to unlock a door and and you, you just can't so um, that means that Kalor's <laughs> adventure is a heist, heist, heist. Everybody, heist. <laughs> I love it. Let's do a heist. Heist, heist. Oh, all right. The Kalor, ha 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 fire. The devotions love. It. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kalor. If you want, you can have <laughs> your side adventure be a heist. I also okay. know that there is a map to yeah. a secret section in the underworld that I gave you back in Embla that you haven't mentioned ever since. Oh, oh god, shit. I completely forgot about that thing. Oh god, I need to look that up again. I haven't forgotten it because I've been like, when is he gonna bring that up? <laughs> I think I forgot to write it down. Um, oh, it's I okay. I know which one it is. Down. Okay. But you stole a map from a dwarf during the uh, war card game tournament, yeah. and uh, yeah, so you you stole it and. Uh, you you found this map, and if you want to uh, explore it, you're more than welcome to. Um, and we could also do a, a mini heist, so you could have like a two part yeah. if you want. Yeah, I, I would very much like that. And, and the plan for the heist is basically, um, I am. So you you know you mentioned there was a bunch of smugglers in Emblem, right? Uh, smugglers in Emblem and Bethan's hold. Bethan's hold. Bethan's hold. So, I'm I, I'm basically gonna try to use these funds to bankroll sneaking slaves out of um here. Okay, and send them to Bethan's hold, and then uh, Natalia can like launder them and then like set them free. Um. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then they're squeaky clean. I like it. All right. So heist and explore said map into the underworld. Ellie. All right. 
Excellent. And anything else from anyone that in- was inspired from uh, talking about this? Oh, uh, Sporlina would like to go back and mine all of her mines. Oh my god! Yeah, our mines. <laughs> Well, that's actually brought me to another point, too. Uh, being, obviously, just the, the sheer amount of people that were killed and the rebuilding that has to happen. Could we... Uh, Repopulate? Yeah. Uh, no. Build a stronghold! We, yeah, I was, I was thinking about, like, get be granted a land deed inside Embla for our service. Ah. All right. Um, MCDM has a stronghold and followers uh, I thing. love that book. Did you yes. give that to me? I you did. May yeah. have, um, or maybe I probably bought it too. Um, so I'll I'll get that open and absolutely. And this is even in the book, and I swear to God, uh, it even says you are gifted. Hold on. As part of celebration, when the party uh, presents the heroes with a squad of grizzled dwarven veterans, more than an escort, these 20 dwarves have pledged fealty to the heroes in honor of their service to Embla. They vow to serve until death as advisors and protectors, and each one bears their clan crest, as expected, but they all now carry a new badge as well, one that signifies them as honor guard to the heroes. What is your badge? It's a winter flower. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> um, and they are gonna be so grizzled. They're they're so grizzled. They're ready for fucking bodyguard duty or whatever. And the first task we put them on is this mute meet cute uh, speed dating thing that we're saying. <laughs> um, Sporlina does uh, clean them up first, <laughs> and she puts like flowers and mushrooms and all sorts of like pretty plant life like braided into their long hair and beards. Beautiful. Um, yeah, you're gonna be your grizzled. Sina but you're is definitely cute. a suspicious. No, no, I, yeah. I kinda like it. As you should. Nice. Feel all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> so definitely pushing any leadership from any, you know, either Embla or Stoneholm that will hear it, uh, for severe accolades for uh, Mia and Mira's Firebird. Like I, okay. I will put whatever whatever political pressure I can to make sure that they both receive the highest of like honors. Absolutely. Uh, Curse will also help, but with religious pressure. <laughs> All right. Which means just uh, sho- shoving the emblem of the axiomatic general in their face while I talk to them. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. He's not good at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. Um. All right, so you are definitely awarded a plot of land, a a stronghold, uh, yeah, strong stronghold, if you will. Um, it's not much; it's pretty small, but it it, it will do. It's an Embla, uh, right by Doodleg Town, so you can go and visit the nice uh, restaurants whenever you wish. Um, and these dwarves help you with your uh, said adventures, or not adventures, but yeah. Sporlina would like to make a druid's grove right outside of Embla and then have a estate tunnel into the plot of land that we have. Lure is going to send an open invitation to come down there to his um, mushroom hookup. Oh, that's right. (laughs) (laughs) I think you mean mushroom hookups. Yes. Yeah, like, maybe more than Kaler, one. Kaler is strongly considering becoming a mushroom people expat. <laughs> he's got. He's really gotten used to the kombucha. <laughs> I mean, the, all the ladies do really like you because you smell like death. So it makes sense. Uh, Permanent. I'd like to go back to that house and find that poster of him and put it in the stronghold. Wait, which poster? What remind me? In the, in the, oh, fuck the room of the daughter of the lady that Elora's mom inhabits the body of. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Young Uvain, Lady Uvain. Yes. Wait, she has a poster of who? Me. She drew a she poster of Perkins because she canon? fell. In, she fell in love with him. That's oh, right. Oh. Yeah. Yes. She drew a poster. <laughs> we charmed person. Oh God! In fact, well, no, we charmed. Still... We had charmed person, but there was already a poster of me in the room, of Kurtz in the room. 
Wait, why was that? Was that? <laughs> why was that? I don't remember. I don't know. You just I think said it. Jesse was being cheeky, but we made it fucking canon. Canon. Because <laughs> we, I thought we made you look like a like a boy like a famous boy band or something. She like thought you were part of like a famous musician. Oh, I just used Trump yeah, person. Just like the, well, I had I had like a Justin Timberlake poster. I had Charm the daughter. I think it was the the daughter's servant fell in love with you. No, I when when we first got there, we look. I looked through the keyhole. Y'all razzed me for that, and I used Trump person because I could see both. Oh of them right, okay. The keyhole. Not my best moment, but it worked. Right, that's when we had to sit down and say, "Okay, these girls are over 18. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had to have like a come to Jesus moment before we do yep. some really inappropriate things on stream. Or you um, banned from Twitch. And and then, that bad. One last thing. If if uh, we can make a, a connection with her or she makes connection with us, uh, Makinga had stated she'd be interested in comparing notes over the Bone Golem. Um, and I That to... was going to come at the very end, yes. Oh, okay, cool. Anything else from anyone else? All right. At the very end of the month, you all uh, kind of gather back in this brand new, still dusty. It's not been uh, cleaned up just uh, quite yet, but it's still, um, it's a nice little place. Your uh, helpers helped you out cleaning it out and um, also helping you with your dating service. Uh, and they're, in essence, just doing their best. Uh, but you kind of go over what you've been doing, uh, Sporlina, with making the Grove right outside of Embla, as well as the dating service, as well as um, uh, uh, just coordinating allyship with everyone in the Fungi Forest. All the way to Cinna, planning a plot to... Uh, take down her father politically and also teach him a lesson uh one that he will not forget with her brothers as well and um kick his ass and then ass. uh kurt you went to vethan's hold where you um met up with intelia and saw just how nice and uh what they were trying to do with vethan's hold and uh learned about again about the prince's ransom that natalia had uh, hidden away in an island until she realized that the island was um, not the best place to to stay, and so she had a GTFO, but you're welcome to go get it if you so desire, so you're planning on going to do that. Um, to Kalor, who has a map uh, to a special location in the underworld, as well as a uh, wants to do a heist in Halath to kind of uh, Robin Hood the the finances of Halath um, as part of reparations, and uh, then Elora who is looking for her father's head um, in deep deep underworld. And finally, after about a month, you finally receive a message from Makinga, and it comes in the uh, form of the sending message, which you can reply to, and she says. Welcome, or not welcome, she would say, Hello again. Thank you for your cooperation through everything in Haloth. You have done us a great service, and my family as well. Yes, I spared some one of my siblings, and another sibling, I believe, is still at large. But I have no desire to go find her. As for you, I might have something important for you to see. I believe Elora has a friend that I am most interested in researching about, but after spying on you for quite some time, I realized that Elora also wants to create her own undead army, something about vengeance for her city. I can get behind that, and I might be able to help you. Whenever you have time, or whenever is most appropriate for you, come visit me in the 
Ossuary, Ossuary Collaborative. Just send me a message, and I'll be around. She sends multiple sending messages, uh, so you can respond multiple that, times. <laughs> that was amazing. How did you spell, send a spelling cell with a th thousand words? In it? Uh, yeah. The ossuary is—is is that the magical door that we went through uh, <laughs> before where we first met the king? Indeed. Okay, so we know how to get back there. Indeed. Cool. Um. Sure. Uh. Oh, quick update. Uh. Mark your calendars. Eleven months from now, we're doing the uh, Underworld Olympics in uh, <laughs> in Halat. Um, love... Yeah, we're all replying at the same time since she didn't tell us. <laughs> Just drive her crazy. Um, all right. Yeah. I mean. Does, does that, did that mean she wanted to meet with all of us, or she just wanted to meet with me and Bear? Uh, all of you, yeah. Oh, I okay. mean, she assumes all of you are a a item together. Do we know? Does do those ruins still house? Uh, no, we killed the demi lich. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I, I guess we can. So we've got a couple things that we need to do on the the surface. Then Jesse, is that all going to be part of the running side quest adventure? I think so, yeah. Okay. So, most immediate, uh, return to Rybalka, give the Moonstone, go on Prince's Ransom quest, check with Makinga, uh, kill Torbane Daddy, uh, and check on the Vikmadir alliance thing that we set up and never really heard anything back about. <laughs> Turn Morik into a eunuch. I mean, the crystalline people have kind of already done that. <laughs> no, his character is fine. Uh, all right. Except that he's part of the collective. He is part of the collective. Um, kind of screwed up her. All right. So then let's plan for um, you're going to go up to the. You know, we could probably do that right now. Yeah, let's write probably it down. Enough. No, as in like we, we could oh. probably just role play through some of that up up there um all right <clears throat> so you guys make your way upwards uh after the month of course uh make your way upwards to the upper worlds um where you eventually find your way back to rybalka and actually let's switch to that map because we haven't seen it in god knows how long as part of our entrance into Rybalka, once we come through the tree at the edge of the forest, I've been spending some time uh, while Sin has been sleeping using the Origami Con to make a bunch of like exotic animals, and I'm just we're gonna have a parade of exotic paper animals uh, welcoming us into Rybalka for all the children to play with. Uh, all right. And Sporlina immediately, as soon as we hit the surface, she just starts going, <laughs> Ben, Ben. <laughs> And my big lumbering tree friend. Oh, Finn. <laughs> oh, him. Finn. <laughs> What's that critter called? Oh, the little uh, Wapple Tinger. The Wapple Tinger. Yeah, the Wapple Tinger at the bar. Uh, Hopefully they see. didn't eat him. <laughs> All right, nobody yeah. mentioned what happened to the Griffin Wind Gatherers. We never saw him. Nothing happened. Yes, you guys fucking hate. <laughs> I mean, technically, we can say whatever we want because we were the only ones that witnessed it. So they fought valiantly at our sides at the end. As no, you explain this, we don't know where they are. <laughs> Something happened. It'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be Kalor and I spinning the tail uh, in Cinemoira since we all have the highest charisma. <laughs> uh, as you hear um, Sporlina yelling. Finn! Finn! You see Finn Starling go, is someone calling me? And then you see the tree just immediately, like, get up and oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, somehow hugs Sporlina, you, who's... You, you see Finn, that the tree has, like, seven different uh, rope swings attached to him. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he's got, like, and, like he's ribbon, got kites. And ribbons tied around him. Yeah, he's got kites stuck in him. It looks like uh like little girls have been 
catching his leaves and putting like little barrettes on it. So like one <laughs> whole tree trunk is just covered in like barrettes and hair ties. As he picks you up and hugs you, you hear <laughs> as a kid falls from his <laughs> uh, from his canopy as it was climbing. Right when <laughs> <laughs> you get called, ow, my tush. <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, you are met with the other citizens of Rybalka. You see uh, Finn Sterling. You see um, who else is here? Uh, I'm looking for their picture. Um, Landor Bug. You see Mayor Igor Leonid. And most importantly, importantly you see Yuri and... Everyone's favorite, Soul Took. Does anybody else think it's a little weird that they're all wearing the same clothes that they were wearing like nine months ago? <laughs> God, or we? <laughs> yeah, really. Well, people can wash their clothes. <laughs> That's odd. To be fair, I think I'm the only person here that I has know. actively bought clothes during this game. Why? Why oh, wait, we did I buy the winter clothes. I had a perfectly good bat cloak. <laughs> Uh, as uh, you guys see, everyone is um, coming over to you, giving you uh, welcome wishes and stuff. Um, everyone roll a d100. Uh, oh God. I would like to return the healer's mace and the imperial chain mail. Ah. Is any, are any of your protectors with you? There's 20 of them, so... Chances are a handful oh. of them could be. Oh, are, uh, are a dwarven protector? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Okay. We left um, maybe half of them back at the, the stronghold. Okay. Uh, are they about off, to fight us or something? Why are you asking that? First off, you all rolled, like, ridiculously low for our D100. Uh, Sporalina is the one who gets it. Um, Sporalina, as you're hugging... Uh, soul took you feel a what feels like something ram you in the back <laughs> slash butt and uh as puka flies up and just kind of um excitedly uh brushes up against you and you can see soul took a puka what did i tell you get away hi puka I just and... grab Puka by the, like, ram horns and kind of give him, like, a little jest of a shake and then, uh, like, push him up into Finn. <laughs> uh, Puka looks like he has a, a spot in Finn, like he's been um, utilizing Laying Finn. Laying in one spot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you can see, like, the bark is, like, all pushed <laughs> away and stuff. Um, Finn uh, does uh, have a certain staff in his hands? He does. Oh, thank God you got it. <laughs> oh, yes. After um, what we heard, what happened in the underworld, we were worried that something would have happened. But uh, not but a month ago, we received a wonderful omen, beautiful sunlight and sunset as well. We knew something had happened. Something of good nature. And we knew that you had succeeded, or at least I knew. Uh, approximately how long has it been since we left Rebelka? Probably several months. Are we talking about like like six plus months? Yeah, yeah, it's probably summer by this point. Does uh, our little lady friend have a baby bump? Which lady friend? The lady we went to get the winter flower for. With all the <gasps> all the dudes wanted to get up inside her? Gwendolyn, uh, above a uh, fifty, uh, yes. Below fifty, they're infertile. Uh, not infertile. They're they're <laughs> enjoying their time together. They want to have a year of no kids, uh, before <laughs> before they get into the kids. Because <laughs> let's be honest, you need to have like that year first. <laughs> As uh, but yeah, you are welcomed back. Uh, they. Uh, except the moon shard as the high priest juriander whose picture I forgot to show you. Um, but otherwise, uh, they accept it graciously and 
yeah, is there anything else that you guys want to do? Uh, Kurtz would like to buy a new set of armor. All right. Well, Kai, you, there's plate mail. There's everything you could want. Um, plus one armor. Plate mail. Mm, Corrin. Does Corrin have that? First off, let me find where is Corrin. You know what? What's the best armor they got? Well, I've been trying to uh, work in... Uh, you know there's an Alexandrite mine nearby, and I've been trying to work in um, some interesting things into the armor itself, but Alexandrite is recalcitrant, uh, recalcitrant uh, to work with. So um, eh, I got some plate armor for you with uh, some inlays of Alexandrite that might uh, be of use for you, but uh, it's kind of a prototype. Don't know if I can perfect it or not. So, uh, I have no armor. I will take what you got. Uh, the Alexandrite actually just uh, halves the cost for reviving your ass since we do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say Kurtz is naked. Uh, that is literally the only. Well, no. He's in his vestments. I forgot about that. Yep. He's not naked. He's cool. It's good. But he's in essence, he man. has plate mail armor that gives you resistance to radiant damage. Oh. How, how much is that going to run me? Uh, 3,000. Oh, I thought uh, Revolka was all about giving things to people uh, that need them. 1,500. <laughs> how much is in the party fund? We got, we got enough for that. 1,500, right? Yep, 1500 I think the majority of anything that we've found in this campaign has been party fun. So, it's just plate mail? Uh, plate mail with uh, radiant resistance. I'll make it for you. Just remind me. Writing that down. That How beautiful? generous. Mayor Igor uh, steps up. Well, it seems like you did a good job. Now, about, um, if you have a moment, about the tribes here, the Vikmadir tribes. We yeah, were course. planning on sending a contingent, and uh, th there was good progress, of course, but um, the vampire that you sent uh, that was meant to strike a chord with them didn't exactly strike a chord. And uh, if there's anything that we can do for the tribes to unite them, well, we're, we would like to do it because ever since there's been a lot of tension and some small skirmishes here and there that uh, boil over, but I'm hoping to, uh, uh, to solve any issues in the meantime. And if you are able to help me solve it, I would be most appreciative of it. I mean, at this point, we're practically experts at parlaying with people who don't like each other. Wonderful. And it's settled. You will travel north and talk with the tribes and tribe leaders with uh, Soltuk. Soltuk will help you. And, uh... Is Alan all right? Uh, as far as we know, uh, Alan's fine. It's just he was n unable to unite the tribes for one reason or another. Well, we've got one reason. Starts with O and ends with Olympics. Now, let me tell you what's going to go on in a couple oh of months. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, let's not dilly-dally right. then. How about so, everyone this to the... What's gonna to happen. the uh, Thirsty Serpent Tavern, and Sounds you guys great. head over to the Thirsty Serpent Tavern for uh, a little reunion, a little, little hanging out. You see that Gwendolyn is, in fact, drinking, so you know that she is not pregnant. <laughs> uh, Swirlina walks in, swings open the door. Her full mushroom form, which they've kind of briefly seen, but not, like, fully. And as she swings open the door, she goes, which one of you brave men or women... I don't discriminate, can afford 
to if I was like to just give me all the alcohol tonight. <laughs> so much. I want it all. Re, can you describe the individual who would agree to such a proposal? Oh, I'm assuming probably like like an old crusty man. Like uh Swirlina is in her sugar baby era. Oh my god. <laughs> So she's gonna make this old man feel like she's inter she's gonna make him feel like she's been interested in him all night long as he's just like funneling drinks into her. It's the librarian. And then at the very Yuri, end of the I night, Yuri Staddle. <laughs> uh, she's gonna uh, slip like a sleeping potion into his drink, and so he just passes out, and then she just goes home. Oh my god! <laughs> make a sleight of hand check. God. And yes, we will say it, it is Yuri. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> God. Uh, thank you. <laughs> God damn it. Where's my. I hate when it does that. Oh, guidance. Helping your friends roofie an old man. Any of the. It's not roofing, <laughs> just putting him to sleep. Correct. Yeah, I'm it's... helping him. He's going to remember everything. <laughs> we'll be gone. We'll be out of here. <laughs> Wow. That's not bad. Plus a D4. Hold on. Yes! <laughs> Ridiculous. You slip in whatever potion, spell, or anything that you need in order to set this guy asleep. Yeah, so he doesn't know that I'm putting him to sleep. Well, slide hand is so good. He's just going to be like, oh, man, I missed it and passed out. <laughs> we drank way too hard. Oh, I'm gonna tell him that we had sex, like he, in the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh not gonna remember. Sporlita's in her villain era, guys. Sorry, Either get yeah. with it or get out of her way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you guys enjoy the night, uh, at least for now, and uh, take a nice long rest if you haven't already. I'm sure you don't need to, um, but otherwise. I don't really have anything else for you guys. If you guys want to do anything, just gonna write out real quick in chats. <laughs> Go north to do a try. Ah, yeah, write it all out for for me. Uh, uh Prince's ring. Meet with Makinga. Um. Kill Tormain Dad. I thought it was Mame. Not sure. kill. Politically kill. Politically kill. Cash Street, father. I don't need him dead. I just need him to respect me. Cash Street. Maybe um, let's castrate him. That's a good idea. He, need to, he needs to be neutered. I think surface wise, Actually, that's. Him. Chip him. What all we need to do? Am I forgetting anything, anybody? Uh, right, stuff please. with your death. Mine's way, That's way down. Way, yeah, I was gonna say, find your... I know, but it it should still make so, a list. Back to underworld. Um. Uh, we are gonna do. Uh, Kalor has a map to somewhere. Uh, we're gonna we do the heist. Kalor's heist. Um, and then my thing. Did anybody else have anything else we need to do side quest wise? Um, that was it. You put the heist up there, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that. That is our uh, fifteen level fifteen plus side quest adventure there. And eventually, once we're once we've done a lot of that, we get a little higher level. We will. Kill the Void Dragon.
<laughs> yeah, got the <laughs> fucking that's, what we, that's what we kept forgetting. I knew we were forgetting something. <laughs> we need to remember. We need to remember. Uh, Cinna heard a rumor it explodes when you kill it. <laughs> so, I'm still trying to decide on my 8th level spell. Uh, I'm currently leaning toward Abby Dalzam's Horrid Writing. Not sure. Uh, you should check out the Blackstaff's Book of a Thousand Spells too when you get to check when you get a minute. The Black, what was that again? I sent it out like a year ago when we started this campaign. I'll uh, I'll send you a new link, but it's called Blackstaff's Book of a Thousand Spells. It's got some fun stuff in it. Definitely recommend it. It's a good one. And I think that's it. Dun, da, da, da. For so, now, dun dun dun. Uh, finishing all of the main stuff dun. and wrapping up pretty much all the loose ends except for post game side quests. It has taken us seventy two sessions to finish this campaign. Nice. Proud of you all. Wow! Yay! Let's go, gods! And for the record, there is an epilogue that I will be. We running through with you guys at some point in inside that list not at the end but somewhere in the middle of that list there's they're going to throw the epilogue in well uh, we also have to hold on let me write it down on the olympics <laughs> that'll be the end <laughs> or maybe not actually that actually yeah. might be no we must do the Olympics. I mean, like, the whole Torbane thing, we can't really transport via plants to find that because Orlina hasn't traveled on the surface very much. So that part, like, in-game time would probably take a few months for us to get to wherever we're going, track them down, do our, all our political shit, and then, you know, that is balls off. Well, I mean, that is balls off. I do have teleport so and i'm sure there's or teleportation that. circles somewhere here and somewhere just saying it's an option figure me out that's why i have a purple worm uh we have a boat <laughs> that so would be mark. amazing oh, oh my yeah. god that would because be great. mark's a part of the crystal I ain't gonna need it. This is ours now, bitch. I can also transport us anywhere within 50 miles, too. Um, fuck yeah. I mean, we could go pirating. <laughs> if we really care. Um, we're kind of at the level where we don't need we don't need to deal with boats or, or flying ships. Hey, as long as you tell me where you're going so that I can Perhaps. have time to prep it. I'm good. I'm cool with that. I'm down with whatever. Um. So yeah. Cool. 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 Seventy-two sessions, guys. Do you have a Do you have dates written down on any of your sessions? Like when our Go first us. first uh, session of this was. Oh fuck no! It's just session one, session two. Actually, uh, I might have. No, no dates. Oh okay. god! But we've been definitely been at it for what, like a, over a year. Yeah, oh, yeah, because there was like several weeks we took off for Jesse having a kid and all that. Yeah, I'd say a year and a half, two years. No more kids, Jesse. I mean, that's what my wife said. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all talking about this old snip snip? Uh, we are. We're going to wait until Jack, uh, my second son, is a year. Because I'm like, maybe we might want one. Let's just <laughs> wait. And maybe we'll see. And then how after, after her, a year. How was like pregnancy for her? Was it really bad or anything? It's pretty bad, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. 
she has she's poly, she has polyhydramnios, which is like excess fluid uh, for both pregnancies. So she was a high risk pregnancy for both of them. Uh, oh, so that's yeah, awful. doesn't really want to go through that again, which I I totally get. You want a daughter? Is that why do you want like a you want a little daddy's girl? I I I just want I want everything out of life, and I like I love my boys. I have a boy now, and it's like okay, now I need a daughter so I can have everything <laughs> you know but you know that, that's not how i it works, totally understand that i know you i <laughs> i know that you're not man. like you don't like hate your sons or something no. but i, I gonna, understand gonna say that that's the reason that my eldest brother has three daughters because he was trying for a son oh jesus yeah <laughs> so this is my curse <laughs> yeah. i was just gonna it have boys just, well, i was gonna say this is, it is a fair Hey, I knew someone, um, I was friends with Cody, uh, seven, seven, eight, eight siblings, all boys, all boys. Ew. Oh God. I have one sister and five brothers. Yeah. I have three brothers and one sister and she's the youngest. And then they stopped. (laughs) I have two brothers and then me. I. And special and perfect. I and also, my... obviously, the middle child. <laughs> Why, obviously? Of course. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to close down the stream. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Join our Discord. Um, like and subscribe to our YouTube <laughs> channel. It really helps us get to other people. We only stream to about three to five people <laughs> right now, but. We're honestly just streaming because we we just love playing this game. So, uh, good night, everybody.